All right, so here we're back to our detailed camera view again. We have a nice 3D model here that we're going to use to kind of demonstrate some things. So one of the first things that I really want to talk to you about is this chisel area in the center of the drill. I noticed this, it seems to be a lot thinner than, than most drills. It really is, Danny. And, you know, that's, that's a really important feature here because, you know, what do we want to do in terms of this work hardening material? We want to reduce the length of the cutting edges. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really big factor. And when we think about forces, you know, um, there's a lot of different ways that you can analyze uh, drilling force. But a lot of, let's say, tried and true formulas, basic formulas that people use, about 70% or so of the thrust forces in drilling come from the size of this chisel area. Right. You know? And that chisel is just at this cross section in the middle where the, where the line is. It right? is. It is. Just right where my finger is showing there. Um, and, of course, a lot of that is is because, one, we've got a zero speed condition right there. Uh, we've also got the fact that, you know, it's not a traditional, let's say, normal cutting edge. You right. know, we're actually uh, extruding material right here, pushing it out Just of the way. pushing it out of the way, right. And, and that really starts to create a lot of force. So if we can reduce the length of that, then we see an immediate benefit in the forces. We also see a big benefit in how well the drill can center. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people call it wobbling. Some people call it walking. But the more that we can get this drill to stabilize and start drilling well on contact, the better. So that's one of the first things that, that we want to emphasize. Now, normally when I see a chisel that gets thin like that, I think of a, a weak chisel. But mm -hmm. what did we do to the geometry to make the, the chisel where it you know, was able to reduce the forces, like you said, but also still be strong? So what did we yeah, do? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Danny. So... A lot of it has to do with two things. So one is you can just sort of subtly see right here that there's a little bit of shape change. It's very faint in this in this flank, but that gives us some more room here so that uh, we have better extrusion along the chisel. Right. Also helps a little bit with coolant flow coming in here. But then we can start to talk about how the rake angles change. We've got a slide for this later, but we can just kind of talk about that, that this gash is very unique in that most, most gashes around tools have a straight uh, rake all mm -hmm. the way across. This is actually not just curved, but it's a variable rake angle from one end to the other. So it's a little bit, it's still a positive rake in this area toward the center, um, but it's a lower rake than it is out here. And that really provides a lot of extra strength right here. Yeah, that and a nice large radius too. In there too. Absolutely. You know, if you look down in here, you can see um, from this view especially just how big that radius is and how nicely it flows down into the flute. Yeah, so that makes better chip flow exiting. Absolutely. I mean, this is a this is a very wide flute and, um, and it's really designed to work with that gash. 